Morning all. Before I continue a look at pawn structures, in the recent London Classic I managed to lose two King's Indian pawn structures which is called the D5 pawn chain by Saltis. Now I've artificially put um, Kings on to make it a legal position within chess base. Um, this is the D5 pawn chain so White clearly has the advantage on uh, the Queen side and a thematic break is often C5. Black's thematic break is often f5, f4, and then carrying on g5, g4 sometimes, with the king often on g1 actually, with an extra bonus if these lines are opened up. If the king's over here, that changes the picture quite a bit actually without that bonus. And maybe, you know, the king can move here and carry on strategically with this c5 break. So that often happens in, for example, the Simish king's engine where white uh, castles queenside. Uh, so what did Soltis uh, say about it? A closed game with opposite side activity. The primary openings it can stem, uh, you can get this pawn chain from, the king's engine, uh, sometimes the Benoni or the Royal Lopez. Okay, the themes for white, massive queenside space advantage. C2 to C4 to C5 break. Prophylaxis with g2 to g4, that's very interesting. Sometimes um, f5 is trying to be uh, discouraged. But let's imagine um, the white king, let's give black a move, a couple of moves, to change the pawn chain a little bit. Even here, g4 is sometimes a move in the king's engine. It's like Shirov's system. Uh, because the idea uh, is to prevent g5, g4 takes f3. If, if white's already got a pawn here, and if this is undermined with h5, sometimes h3. So we get a dangerous version of prophylaxis uh, if, if g4 is used, or this, this kind of pawn triangle here, which actually this, this very type of prophylaxis happened in one of my London Classic games. I want to try and go over both of them, but I want to highlight the key strategic themes. Basically, there are two imminent strategic disasters for both sides. The c4, c5 break will sometimes lead to a weak c7. If black does dare to capture with d takes instead of leaving the pawn intact, c7 can then just be pulled up, usually with rooks. Like two doubled rooks here, a knight b5 come in, could, could spell disaster for pawn left on c7. I also had a king's Indian attack as white, so basically the same pawn structure in reverse, where c2 was a sitting duck on the c-file, and black had you know the advantage with the pawn on d4 on the queen side. Uh, so these are very strong strategic themes. One thing uh, to bear in mind, okay, it's a race situation, so both sides are attacking on, on, on each other's uh, wings. But uh, if white ever plays f3, sometimes this diagonal is also open for exploitation or tempo gain. For example, in, in one of my classic games with g3 and bishop g2 being played, I thought knight b5 was a threat after c takes d, but it wouldn't be because of queen b6 check picking up this knight if the bishop is not on e2. So subtleties like that are important because it's a race situation. The time for both sides' strategic breakthrough um, becomes a race scenario, and it usually divides the results. Either one side wins or one side loses. Draws are much more infrequent than, say, Slav, you know, defense type pawn structures, you know, the exchange Slav or something like that. So, this is a very exciting structure, and I think also we can gain insight just by comparing it uh, to the e5 chain. Um, black, by the way, you know, obviously he doesn't want to put his king on the queen side, that's usually very dangerous. I had a game in the league last year against Hasbun, where I think he did do that, and I gained, as well as a breakthrough on the queen side, uh, an extra bonus target. This pawn structure really favours white for queen side expansion, so the king is, is uh, undoubtedly safest on the king's side. E even if the white king escapes, Sometimes f3 can be put under pressure. Um, another thing to bear in mind are bishops, actually. If black has a dark square bishop on g7, uh, before closing up the position with f4, sometimes it's good to exchange it off. Uh, so let's, let's try and look at that possibility. 
let's add g6 and imagine there's a light square bishop here and a dark square bishop here sometimes in the king's engine the king's engine player is playing king g8 knight g8 and bishop h6 the idea is later that when you close up the position with f4 your you've gotten rid of your bad like bishop it would have been bad in the pawn chain especially when you play g5 unless it can rig it out later sometimes there is a wriggle opportunity like this and this diagonal is often uh, very good and many kings engine players have done this wriggling maneuver uh, but that's something to bear in mind because if you exchange off the dark squared bishop of white these squares uh, are particularly more sensitive they're going to be more sensitive for white also uh, in terms of bishop exchange strategy and light square uh, complex uh, exchanging a bishop you know usually you know on this diagonal or getting rid of blacks uh, light square bishop means that white's king is actually safer so that's a form of prophylaxis often the king's engine player is white is aiming uh, with this breakthrough to first get rid of this bishop uh, for example knight takes a7 and knight, knight takes c8 because then when the pawn structure becomes locked later on uh, basically imagine white's king here and uh, black pawn here and h3 often um, a breakthrough sacrifice is bishop takes h3 so we're actually getting rid of this bishop somehow or white trading bishops like this sometimes improves the security of the white king position against such sacrifices so and also of course you get the added bonus of weakening uh, black on the light squares um, so that's that's often um, winning because then later if white say gets a big knight to e6 and it's unchallenged by a bishop then that's huge you know and then crashing down the c file the knight can play um, a very good instrumental role in getting to the, the black king actually once the c file is infiltrated so this I find this King's engine formation fascinating and what I want to do um, as well as look at at what Solstice describes as a seminal game is try and also make comparisons uh, to the E5 chain um, now immediately before even going to that there's also the idea if it was the E5 chain which we're going to look at this this would be a good blockade square and in the Kings Union it often is with a knight coming to D7 because you want to hold up C5 exchange off dark square bishops and use this blockade square um, now for 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 white what would be the blockade square that's that's an interesting question if the thematic break is um, g4 it's kind of try, trying to hold up g4 I guess so sometimes um, white well exchanging off light square bishops and sometimes playing a knight maneuver to, to f2 to stop g4s but uh, it's not so obvious what the key blockade square is actually okay but let's go now to the e5 chain and maybe go back to this after uh, this d5 chain so I'm going to set up the e5 pawn chain now I'm going to see if we can cross fertilize some ideas. So we're going to look at king positions, uh, potential bishop, strategic bishop exchanges, and king side safety issues. Okay, one moment. Okay, bearing in mind the insights of the d5 pawn chain, the e5 pawn chain is also interesting um, from a similar, similar kind of ideas. Uh, the strategic break for black or the undermining. Uh, operation c5 is often used and if c3 so only sort of sometimes in the French would you play c4 and then carry on b5 b4 um, often actually it's the case that c5 is just to try and weaken d4 and blacks often trying to exchange off light square bishops and weaken white on these key light squares with outposts often being f5 and c4 uh, what does Soltis say about this themes for white the f4 f5 break and that of course has the bonus if the black king is on the king side and sometimes it's on the queen side because actually it is a lot safer there uh, then that's going to be very dangerous for the black king uh, my good friend Alex actually played uh, in the winner variation which had um, a kind of e5 wedge at least and it was dangerous for black on the king side 
you know, h7 is, is obviously tar a target for a, a light square bishop. Black's also sometimes considering attacking the pawn chain from its head, the f6 pawn. Sometimes that generates f-file counterplay. Possibility of maybe an exchange track on f3 is common in some lines of the French defence as well. And then d4 can, can collapse after. Okay, so what does Salter say? Due to White's kingside space advantage and development advantage, Black must generate counterplay or be mated. Novices often lose to the sparkling Greek gift sacrifice, that's bishop takes h7. Attacking the head of the pawn chain with f6 is, is, is seen as frequently as uh, the base of pawn chain. Actually this is the ex most exploitable base. Uh, if c3 that would be the base, but this is like the exploitable base of the pawn chain. In response to e takes f, black accepts um, a backward pawn on the semi-open e file. Uh, but there is a possibility of a further e5 break, and that often liberates a bad bishop on c8, actually. If white plays d4 takes c5 when black plays uh, c5, it's called the wedge formation. White gets an outpost on d4, and the possibility of exploiting the dark squares, while black gets an, uh, an overextended e5 pawn to work on. Sometimes, though, that's also a basis for white overprotecting e5. Which can cramp on Black's game, uh, this e5 pawn, and that's often favoured by Nimsovich. D takes c5. It was kind of revolutionary at the time because it wasn't leaving the pawn chain intact. So, um, comparing to the King's engine ideas, uh, so basically, King safety uh, with with White having this break f4 f5, it's often a very good idea for the Black King to be on c8. It's okay for the white king to be on the king's side if, if the pawn chains like this with this e5 pawn. Very rarely on the queen's side. Um, in um, in the winner, for example, when black's like doubling white's pawns here, the black king is is safer on the queen's side. A lot of Botvinnik games, where he's won in end games, uh, which has been good. So he's used the undermining, but also getting at these pawns later or creating a pass pawn on the queen's side. Uh, the the blockading um, squares f5 and c4 are relevant. In exchanging off um, bishops, so blacks in the advanced variation often exchanging off, trying to exchange off and weaken uh, the light square. So this kind of bishop exchange is sometimes seen in the advanced variation, bishop d7 to b5. Otherwise, like the king's engine, there's an alternative wriggling procedure. Bishop d7 to e8, sometimes to h5. So in both the e5 chain and the d5 chain, you can end up with a bad bishop, um, which you can either wriggle out or try and exchange off. If you exchange off, you're, you're weakening uh, that square complex. Um, you know, if it's the light square bishop being exchanged off, you're weakening white's light squares. So I want to try and cross fertilize some ideas because they are logically kind of uh, similar. In terms of prophylaxis, you know, black will try and hold up f4, f5 by sometimes establishing a knight blockade on f5. For example, with h5 and knight f5. There's been some classic wins uh, with such a blockade. If that's achieved, then black can carry on on the queen side and maybe infiltrate either on the c file or just slowly, more slowly, just using these light uh, square weaknesses. Okay, what I'm going to do is save that and we're going to switch back to the d5 pawn chain. Okay, what did we learn from the um, e5 pawn chain which might have been relevant there? Let's go on about the strategic breaks again, c5 and f5. Let's put in um, f5 actually, and f4. You see f4 is actually more common in the king's engine, because the white king is often on the king's side. In the French defence, by comparison, uh, we saw that I mentioned c4 was a rarer pos possibility. The thing is, in the French defence uh, with d5, the king is not uh, a bonus for the queen side attack. 
so that's why it's more important to try and explode the center. Exploding the center with f takes e4 is rarer here. Usually black is, is willing to kind of release the tension to play f4 and carry on with g5, g4. So that's an immediate um, highlight difference actually in logic. It's related to the king position that black is more uh, willing to release the tension and directly go into this race scenario. So often actually uh, the king is, is a major consideration not just undermining the pawn chain. Um, let's, let's just highlight that again. So saying that um, basically c4 is much more rarely used. Imagine the white king uh, was on c1 though then we would have a more direct analogy where c4 might actually be useful with the continuation b5, b4 trying to get at the white king. So I think that's a key difference of the handling of structures. It's related to the king. Uh, this this sealing up rather than keeping um, the tension going here. But in terms of uh, the bishop strategies they do seem uh, fairly logically uh, equivalent of exchanging off you know bishops to get rid of a bad bishop on c8 in the French defence and in the King's engine it would have been the bishop on f8. Getting rid of that before kind of closing up the position is often a good idea or wriggling out like here. Uh, and in the King's engine you've got the bishop on f8 and that's kind of wriggled out like that over here. Which is which is useful actually for this diagonal of the King's in here. So there's an extra bonus for that wriggling in the King's engine defence. That can be a useful bishop on the diagonal. But uh, a main highlighted difference is basically um, this incentive uh, to close up the position, uh, which doesn't exist in the French defence as much. So it's related to where the king is. So that affects the strategic breaks or the option to kind of release that central tension. Okay, I hope this was useful and we should look at a few illustrative games now. Thanks very much.